Today we're going to talk about what is likely the most accepted, excused, prevalent sin in the church. Uh, we're going to talk today about worry. We worry about all sorts of stuff, don't we? We worry about bills and expenses, and rising gas prices. We worry about our children's grades and their friends and their future. We worry about the war in Ukraine. We worry about Russia and China banding together. We worry about the war on our southern border. We worry about taxes. We worry about political leaders. Uh, we are still worrying about the pandemic. We worry about appearances. How will people think and look at me? We worry about car accidents. We worry about even things like slipping on the ice. Um, I'm just telling you, we're really good. We worry about money, being alone. By the way, that was number one in a recent survey, being left all alone. We worry about losing a spouse, losing a child. We worry about losing control. <laughs> we worry about failing as a parent. Well, what if I lose my job? Well, what if my parents catch COVID? Uh, I just want you to know, the truth is, some of you are very accomplished worriers. If it was an Olympic sport, you'd be competing for the gold. I'm telling you, some of us here today, we're really, really good. And men, some of you are thinking, oh, good, this is a, a woman thing because I don't worry. Um, let me say, um, we tend, Scott, as men, we don't worry. I just get frustrated. That's the Christian version, frustrated. Or if we're honest, I get mad or I get angry. Can I, can I tell you, that's showing worry in a male form. So this isn't just aimed at the women here today. This is including all of us. Because frankly, I know a lot more angry, frustrated men than even worried women. Okay, uh, let's move on. Worry definition, allowing one's mind to dwell on difficulties or troubles. A state of anxiety, a state of uncertainty over actual or potential problems. Mental distress, agitation resulting from concern, usually over something pending or anticipated. Anxiety is one of those problems that gives birth to all sorts of other problems. Let, let me uh, quote Pastor John Piper. Here's how he explained it. Think about how many other sins are connected to the root sin of anxiety. Anxiety about money will cause you to hoard or steal. Anxiety about succeeding will make you irritable and impatient with those around you. Anxiety about relationships will make you withdrawn or indifferent toward other people. Anxiety about what others think of you will make you lie or stretch the truth. If anxiety could be conquered, a mortal blow would be struck to many other sins. The Bible tells us that worry is the opposite of trust. Worry is the opposite of faith. Okay? So instead of having faith and trusting, I'm going to worry. The Christian life free from worry is one of the greatest freedoms we can enjoy. Okay, we're in the middle of a series entitled Flipped, looking at the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus is speaking to a huge crowd, disciples on the front row, talking to us about the challenges of living in a fallen world. And one of those challenges is the problem of worry. Matthew 26, 25 to 34 zeroes in on the subject of worry. Now we know worry is the key thought, the key idea in this text, because in nine verses, Jesus uses the word worry six times, okay? We're going to see Jesus, king of the kingdom, he's going to make some profound points for us regarding worry, anxiety, fretting, frustrated, angry, mad. You can, you can use all those words, but he's going to talk to us. He's going to instruct us about worry today. Makes five points. Instead uh, of worry, remember that worry thinks too little of our awesome guide. 
uh, verses 25 to 29. A second point Jesus is going to make is we need to realize that worry accomplishes nothing. It doesn't. Third, instead of worrying and fretting and stewing, remember, our God knows and sees everything. Can you, can you believe that? He knows and he sees everything. Verse 32. Uh, and fourth, instead of mourning over the past, instead of fretting over the future, Jesus instructs us, live one day at a time. Verse 34. Okay? Here's the key. We don't need to worry because Jesus is on the throne and we're in his awesome hands. Let's say that again. We don't need to worry anymore. Guess what? Jesus is on the throne, and all of us who know Jesus, we're in his awesome hands. If you're able, would you stand with me? We're going to read out loud. Uh, Jesus' instructions regarding worry, verses 25 to 34. Uh, let's declare God's word together. Here we go. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink, or enough clothes to wear? Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautiful as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he'll give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring enough of its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, uh, we need help because the truth is everybody here today at times, we worry. We get frustrated. Uh, we need your help. So uh, we live in a worry-filled, fearful, anxiety-inducing world, and I'm praying you'll help us to see what your solutions are, what prescriptions you bring us to free us from the shackles of worry. I want to pray especially for those who are here today, for those who are watching online, because some of us, we got some reason to be concerned. We're, we're in the middle of a storm, a financial money-related storm. Could be a storm in our home, storm in our health, storm on the job. Would you help us today to learn from your word what to do about it? And Lord, I, I'm asking for one more step, not just to know what to do. Would you help us to actually put it into practice? Would you help us to start living out your book in our everyday lives? We need you. And uh, we need all that only you can bring to us today. We invite your Holy Spirit to come. We welcome you today in your church. And I'm asking, Lord, that resurrection power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, we're asking for that power to be present today in your church. Use these goofy lips, Lord. And all the church family at Walloon Lake said with one united voice, Amen. you can be seated. This passage my opinion, one of the most significant, convicting passages in all of the Bible, but also one of the most encouraging pass passages in all of Scripture, because uh, most of us at times worry about what's going on in our lives. And I suspect some of you have things you're concerned. That's the Christian word, I'm concerned. 
uh, about stuff going on. And truthfully, if you're looking around, usually you can find more things to worry about than to be happy and rejoicing over. Isn't that true? I can find more things to be upset and concerned and worry and fret and stewing than things to rejoice in the Lord about. Uh, somebody has said, I don't know who, but I like it, worry is practical atheism. Worry is practical atheism because when we worry, we're acting as though there is no God. Or at a minimum, we're acting as though there might be a God, but he doesn't know or care about my situation. It's practical atheism. Um, Most of us think worry is just something that pops up. Uh, There's uncertainty in life. Oh, no, inflation. And suddenly now I'm worried. But actually worry that is closely connected to our deepest desires. Okay? Um, If you go to the text, we looked at this last week. It talked about we worry about the things we're most devoted to. We worry about the things that are our masters. So whatever is our master, that tends to be what we're worried about. Um, Jesus knows that's how he's wired us. Whatever we're devoted to, that tends to be what we're worrying about. Which is why, think about it, um, I don't worry about your kids' grades. Did you know that? Scott, you know, I I just don't. I like your kids. I hope they do well in school. But I don't worry about your kids. I'm worried and I'm concerned about my own kids' grades. Do you understand? Why is that? Because I'm devoted to my own children. Okay? Uh, And you don't worry about my kids' grades either. That's just the way it is. Isn't it right, Hillary? Okay? Now, Jesus begins this section with a command. Okay? I want to just show you. Uh, Verse 25, that's why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Verse 31, so don't worry about these things. Verse 34, so don't worry about tomorrow. Three times in a pretty short section, Jesus commands us, don't worry. Don't worry. No worrying, okay? So that's the command, okay? And I would just say, when it comes to worry, you ready? Just stop it. Just stop. Don't do it anymore. Stop worrying. Jesus says it three times. Stop worrying. Stop worrying. Okay? I think we can pray and sing a hymn and go home, don't you? That's it, right? Uh, If it only was that easy, right? Um, The key question is how. How on earth... Do we quit worrying? We're worried about money. We're worried about health. We're worried about our families, wars, jobs, viruses. Um, How in the world, you thought this was just here by accident? No. How in the world can we extinguish the fire of worry? How can we extinguish it? Okay. And uh, somebody already warned me, don't pull the plug or Henry. Uh, and the Overbeek family, and maybe my bride will be in trouble. Okay, we're going to set that back down. Okay, so um, Jesus gives us five practical ways to extinguish the fires of worry, okay? Um, And what's interesting, he's given us an owner's manual for our lives, and he says, here's how you put out the fire of worry. And I find it interesting it's, it's found in the book and looking to the Lord, not fixating on our worries, our struggles, our frustrations is the secret in every answer. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a heads up. Every answer is all about focusing on the Lord and not focusing on the worry. Here we go. First, if you're taking notes, let's begin. And oh, by the way, those papers that have the prayer requests and the finances on the back blank. And some of you have told us, well, I don't have anything to write on. Well, you can get the prayer request and the money issues, and you got a blank on the back. It's pretty cool, okay? There you go. A uh, little practical tip. Isn't that nice? Here we go. First way to extinguish or put out the fire of worry, remember, worry thinks far too little of our awesome God. 
<laughs> thinks far too little of our awesome God. Food, drink, clothing, three basic needs in life. Verses 31 and 32, let's just look. It tells us God knows our needs, promises to give us our needs, promises to give us everything we want. Is that what it says? Promises to give us everything we need. Okay, So he's not talking about giving you all of your wants. No, everything we need. And the question, verse 25, is this. Here's the ultimate question. Isn't life more than food? And the body more than clothing? And the answer is yes. <laughs> life is so much more than our stuff. Life is so much more than our money, our cars, our houses, our careers, okay? Having the essentials, listen close, is not unimportant. It's important, but Jesus is challenging us here. There's so much higher priorities. There's things that are so much more important than your stuff. Verse 26, now he gives a little practical lesson. He says, look at the birds. God takes care of the birds. Birds work hard. But they also are dependent upon God to provide. Okay, that's his point. Okay, he's comparing us to birds, Myron. Okay, birds, they're, they're important. They really are. But birds have no soul. And birds are only here on earth temporary. Comparing temporary birds with human beings made in God's image who are eternal Think about it, Myron. We're so precious that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead for human beings. That's his point. They're, they're temporary. The birds are nice. God looks after them. But Jesus died on the cross for human beings. Doesn't he care for us even more? Go back to the text, verse 28, 29, 30. Um, God even takes care of the wild flowers in the field. Okay? Um, look at the lilies in the field. They're wild. Nobody planted them. If the Lord takes care of the wildflowers, um, and he clothes them in beautiful, gorgeous colors, here one day, gone the next. By the way, a lily never was out in the field going, oh no, is my clothing? Never for a millisecond was the lily worried about its clothing. But man, it's looking good. If God gives lilies extravagant care to perishable lilies and flowers, how much more extravagant will his care be for us? Think about it. If he cares about the flowers, you didn't even plant them, they just came up, won't he take much more extravagant care of you and of me? Okay. Verse 30, Jesus highlights. Here's the problem. If God takes such amazing care of these temporary flowers... Isn't he going to take even better care of you? <laughs> oh, little faith one? <laughs> what? You, where, who are you trusting? Really? Really? Here's the key. You don't need to worry. Why? Because King Jesus is on the throne and we're in his almighty hands. Isn't that good to know? Got to keep coming back to that. Second way. Are you ready? Paul, I could get you right now. Yeah. No, I'm not going to do it. Uh, that would create a major mess, and I would be here washing carpets tomorrow. Not going to happen. Uh, anyway, uh, second way to extinguish the fire of worry is to remember, instead of being fixated on worry, fretting, and frustrated, and angry, remember worry accomplishes nothing. Worry accomplishes nothing. Go back to the text with me. Verse 27. Can all your worries add even a single moment to your life? Can all of your worrying and fretting and stewing and anger, can it add even a second to your life? Worry does not enhance your life in any way. You got to get that in your brain. It doesn't help. It actually hurts. It saps our energy. It drains our joy and our hope. Worrying doesn't extend life. It actually shortens life. Um, worry offers false solutions, false promises, false predictions. Okay? I, I would say it this way. Worry is a false prophet. 
It's making false predictions. It's saying this is going to happen. And the vast majority of the things we worry about never take place. It's like paying debt on a loan you don't even, you don't even own. Okay? It's like paying interest on a loan. You never even took it out, but you're paying interest on it anyway. No, because it's not going to happen. Most of the things we worry about never happen. Studies tell us 75% of doctor's visits are stress or anxiety or anger related. Can you believe that? 75% of the times we go to the doctor, it involves stress, anger, anxiety, worry. Dr. Charles Mayo, name sound familiar? Founder of the Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota. Here's what he says. Worry affects the circulation, the heart, the glands, the entire nervous system. He said, I've known a lot of people who've died and significantly shortened their life because of worry. Jesus is talking about lifespan here. Okay, Verse 27, he says, nobody can add to the length of their lives. God's word's very clear. Okay, let me give you a couple examples. Job 14, 5. God, you have decided the length of our lives. You know how many months we will live, and we are not given a minute longer. You've already got that down. Psalm 139, 16 agrees. You saw me before I was born, Lord. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Here's what you need to know. Give me your eyes. Our God is sovereign, in control. He controls everything in the universe. And we will die when he has determined. It's not, it's not up to us. It really isn't, okay? Um, there is freedom in knowing, King Jesus, you're on the throne and you've got my days numbered. Why is there freedom? Because that means I don't have to shoulder the responsibility to try and add or subtract to the number of days I'm going to be here on earth. Okay? You already know it. I'm not going to mess with that date. You know how many days I'm going to be before I'm even born. So worrying doesn't add, you can't add a month, a week, a day, an hour, a minute. You can't even add a single second to your life by worrying. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Here's the key. Let me say it again. We don't need to worry because Jesus is on the throne and we're in his awesome hands. We really are. Okay? Back to my fire extinguisher. Okay? How are we going to get worry out? Okay? Here's the third way we're going to extinguish the fire of worry. Um, I need to remember God knows and sees our needs. God knows and God sees our needs. Okay? A key theme of this section, God knows and sees. If you've got your Bible or your phone, go back to verse 4, chapter 6. Your Father who sees everything. Verse 6, then your Father who sees everything will reward you. Verse 18, and your Father who sees everything will reward you. Verse 32, but your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Okay? When I know and remember and believe that my Heavenly Father sees and knows my needs, think with me, frustration, anger, Worry, anxiety begins to melt. Why? Because my, my God, my awesome God, already knows and he sees my situation. Okay? Now, when I start thinking, well, nobody knows and I'm all alone and I think God might have forgot me and he doesn't remember, suddenly now, worry, anger, frustration, anxiety begins to grow. You understand? So it's, it's all about perspective. So really, there's just two options. Give me your eyes. Okay? Two options. Um, if there's no God and he's done nothing for me, if Jesus has not removed condemnation and canceled the power of sin in my life, if the resurrection power of Jesus is not in me and not in you, then we might as well just let worry rip. 
right? Okay, let it rip, let it go. You better be worried, you better be concerned, you better be frustrated, because you know what? You're all on your own. That's the truth, okay? Might as well allow anxiety, reign, and rule, and control your lives, okay? Because it's just us. However, if Jesus is alive in you and active in my life, and he knows our needs, and I know for sure that he knows and sees, and I can run to him with my burdens and my concerns. And look at this, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. I can give him my worries, my concerns, my trouble, and in exchange, he gives me his what? Anybody know? Peace, his holy calmness. So I give him the worry, and he gives me the peace, okay? Which means the God who took care of our greatest problem. The God who took care of me on the cross in the empty tomb, he can be trusted with my everyday troubles and your everyday struggles, okay? Uh, Jesus has secured our eternity. Jesus will see us through today, and when we get up tomorrow, he'll see us through tomorrow. That's the point. And we need to trust him. Here's the key idea we don't need to worry. Jesus, our Savior, our King, is on the throne. And we're in his almighty, awesome hands. We really are, okay? Let me go grab the fire extinguisher for a fourth time, Henry. Better hope I don't pull the pin, right? Fourth way we extinguish the fire of worry is this, okay? Instead of mourning over the past... Instead of fretting over the future, Jesus tells us forth, live one day at a time. Live one day at a time. Go back to the text, verse 34. Uh, so don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Isn't that practical? You, you, I don't go biting off tomorrow. Today has enough trouble all by itself. Charles Spurgeon, anybody ever heard of Charles Spurgeon? Prince of Preachers, uh, London, probably one of the greatest preachers for, in all time. He himself struggled with worry and anxiety, panic attacks his entire life. Okay, And here's what he said. Anxiety does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows, but only empties today of its strength. Isn't that interesting? It doesn't, it doesn't help tomorrow. It only messes up today. Here's the truth. Whatever tomorrow holds, Jesus will be there and he'll help us through. Whatever happens on Monday, the Lord is going to show up and he'll give us the daily strength that we need for tomorrow. Okay? Jesus gives us grace and peace and power for when? Today. Let me say this. I can't walk with Jesus today for tomorrow, Jose. Does that make sense? I can't, I can't uh, get his grace and his strength and his peace for tomorrow today. I can only walk with Jesus today. Okay? And he gives us the daily bread for today. Okay? He never promised us a trouble-free life. I think that's just real. But he said, there's enough trouble today, hang with today, and tomorrow when you wake up, okay, then I'm going to worry about tomorrow, because then I'll have God's grace to deal with tomorrow, okay? When I bite off tomorrow's trouble today, you know what I'm doing? I'm worrying. <laughs> I'm stewing. I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting angry. I'm filling my life with anxiety. That's the truth. Don't scoop into your lap all the imagined troubles of tomorrow. Because you may get up and what you think you're facing won't even come true. Okay? Constant worrying about tomorrow will make you mean and ornery and irritable. You want me to say that again? You just stew and get all worked up about tomorrow. You will be mean and ornery and irritable. It will steal your joy. It will ruin your relationships. It will wreck your testimony. I'm just telling you, when you are filled with worry and frustration and anger, 
people start backing away. I don't want any of that, okay? God only gives us the grace we need for today, okay? One day at a time, I'll give you the grace. And tomorrow, I'll give you more grace tomorrow. Here's the key. I don't need to worry because King Jesus is where? Where's King Jesus right now? He's on the throne and he has us where? In his awesome, almighty hands. Isn't that good? Just got to keep coming back and back to that. Um, fifth, did you notice we skipped over verse 33? We did. Let's go back. Let's don't skip because that's really the high point. It's really the ultimate priority and passion of those of us who know and love and follow Jesus. Here's, here's what it says, verse 33. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he'll give you everything you need. Let's read that again. That's worth reading again, yeah. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously, and he'll give you everything, everything you need, okay? So what's the fifth way we can extinguish the fire of worry, okay? And, and it's pretty clear. Seek the kingdom of God and the king of the kingdom, and oh, by the way, that's a present tense command. Seek. Do it present tense now, today. Okay? Let me give you a little thought about seek. The word seek here, seek, the kingdom, was a, was a word used to describe in biblical times a hunter. Chase, this is someone who hides in a blind and hunts birds. You ever, do we have any bird hunters here today? Yeah? Okay, a few of you. Yeah, it's, it's a bird hunter. And now he's hiding and he's not just hunting for sport. He's hunting. Why? Because he's hungry and he needs to catch a bird. Okay, so the hunter focuses his mind and his eyes on those birds. Okay, he keeps his bow and arrow. They didn't have guns back then. Keeps his bow and arrow ready to shoot, okay, and he's alert, and he's wide awake, and he's watching uh, because he really has his attention focused on the bird, okay, focus of his attention, um, because just as the bird hunter makes the bird that he's hunting the focus and center of his attention, catch this now, we are to make Jesus' kingdom the center of our attention, okay, we're to seek Christ's kingdom above all else. Look at verse 33. I'm hungry to seek Jesus. I'm hungry to live strong for his kingdom every single day. It's my top priority. If I'm thirsty about anything, it's about the kingdom of Christ. Okay? As followers of Jesus, seek two things. Verse 33. We're called to know and serve and seek the king. And we're called to know and seek and serve the kingdom of the king, okay? We're called to grow in righteousness, in right relationship with the king of the kingdom, daily talking, daily living with the king of the kingdom. And the king of the kingdom has a name. Any guesses? What's the king of the kingdom? His name is Jesus, is the king of the kingdom, okay? Put Jesus first, Jesus' agenda his plans to be strong and serve and live for Jesus and his kingdom. Now go back to the text. I want to show you something. Because there's a promise. It says, uh, live strong for Jesus. Seek him. Be all about his kingdom. And look what it says, verse 35. And then he'll give you everything you need. You know, so all the things you've been worrying about, your food, your clothes, um, uh, all those things that you worry about, I'll take care of those. Make me first in your life. If I'm the priority, if I'm the king of your life, if you're daily seeking me and my agenda, oh, by the way, I'll take care of all of your needs. It's amazing. Then the worries just kind of melt away. Um, I want to show you a little something. 
I was going to build a worry box, okay? So I had the box, and I was going to wrap it all up, and I was going to put worry box on it. And um, my bride said, don't do that, because every nosy person in your family will go, oh, that's your worry box, okay? Uh, so she said, no, um, use empty Kleenex boxes. Nobody's going to go digging around in there. And I'm thinking, brilliant, brilliant. So you got the woman's and the man's here, okay? And now, <laughs> there you go. Now, yep, bigger. <laughs> it's, it's mostly just prettier, okay? It's got lilies on it right here. Uh, now you got to, I got to worry, okay? And I'm going to take that worry that's just driving me crazy, and I can't get it out of my head. Put it right here in my worry box. Lord, it's yours. It's yours. I give it to you. And in exchange, put, give me peace to guard my heart and my mind, okay? And here's my challenge with the old worry box, okay? Just let it set. Just keep putting in the worries and do that for a month, okay? So I'm, I'm going to go an entire month. I'm not looking at it. And then after the end of the month, go and dig them out and see what God did for you. That, that's my challenge, okay? So you go in to your Kleenex box, <laughs> we're not going to label it a worry box, and go dig it up uh, after a month, Henry, and see what God has done. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. Take all those snotty, boogery things that just overwhelm you and put them in the Kleenex box. Sorry, dad joke. Closing thought. The God who took care of the greatest problem that we have, <laughs> or sinners bound for hell. Jesus took care of our greatest problem in life on the cross in rising from the dead. Can surely be trusted to take care of anything else we face in our daily lives. That's the truth. Jesus secured our eternity. Jesus took care of, of all that is to come. Jesus will see us through today and then tomorrow. That, that's the idea here. Don't try to worry your way to a better tomorrow. It does not work. Don't try to be the God of the future. That job is already taken. You understand? The, the Lord is already on the throne. And he's got a grip on our life. And he writes our future. And he rules our future. And guess what? He promises to do good things. And take good, take bad things and make them good in our lives. That's how much he loves us. That's how awesome he really is. Okay? We don't need to worry. Because Jesus is on the throne. And we're in his awesome Almighty hands. Would you say it with me as we close? We don't need to worry because Jesus is on the throne and we are in his awesome almighty hands. Okay? Now I want you to make the hands with me when we go there. We don't need to worry because Jesus is on the throne and we are in his awesome almighty hands. Turn to somebody and tell them. Go ahead, tell them. I don't need to worry because Jesus is on the throne. And I'm in his awesome, almighty hands, Jose. I'm telling you what, if you'll start living that way and remembering that, get your worry box going, <laughs> what freedom there is to have a life lived mostly without worry. Bow your heads as we close. Lord, um, thank you for giving us instructions and guidance for how to deal with the fiery worries and anxiety and frustrations and angry things in this fallen world. As we close, Lord, I want to pray especially for those who are really prone <laughs> to worry, anxiety, getting mad and angry and frustrated. Some of us, Lord, that's our biggest entangling, besetting sin. So, Lord, uh, if you're talking to us specifically, speak. We're, we're listening.
Any of you say, you know what, Pastor Jeff, I think you've been talking to me today. God's word is speaking loudly to me, fretting, stewing, fearing, frustrated, angry, mad. That's a pretty regularly challenge in my life. And by God's grace, I want free. I, I, I'm, I'm seeking after freedom. Would you pray for me as we close? Anybody? That's me. You're talking to me. Would you lift your hand? I want to pray for you. Yep. Are there anybody else? That's, that's one of my big ones. Yep. Anybody else? Lord, you're talking to me today. Here's the steps to freedom according to King Jesus. If you just raised your hand, pray this as we work through them. Extinguish the fire of worry. Jesus, you watch over the birds and the flowers, and I know you care even more for me. Second, I, I acknowledge worry, frustration, anger. It doesn't work. It actually makes things worse. And I know you've numbered my days, and I trust you. Jesus, I'm reminded, third, you know and see my needs. You took care of me on the cross. You took care of me rising from the dead. You can be trusted with my daily life. Fourth, Jesus, would you help me to start living one day at a time? <laughs> give me the strength to focus on today's challenges. Lord, give me the ability not to bite off tomorrow's troubles today. And finally, Jesus, teach me to focus on you and your kingdom. Help me to start putting you first daily. I know I don't need to worry because, Jesus, you're on the throne and I'm in your awesome hands. And if you're here today or you're watching online and you don't know Jesus, you've never said, I do by faith, you've never invited Jesus to come into your life as Savior, Lord, and King, my friend, you've got reason to worry. <laughs> now you really do have reason to fret and fear and be angry and frustrated. Great news. Jesus will come into your life even right now, right while you're watching, while, right while you're sitting here today. Jesus, I believe you'll come into my life today because I believe the gospel facts. You left the glory of heaven took on a human body, lived a sinless life for me. Jesus, I believe you took my place on the cross, shed your blood for my greatest problem. I'm a sinner. I believe, Jesus, you took my place in the grave early Sunday morning. You didn't stay dead, but you were resurrected from the dead for me. I believe those facts. And right now, by faith, Jesus, I receive you into my life. Open up the door. Invite you in, Jesus. Be my Savior, my Lord, my King. Come take charge of my life. Give me the power to be victorious over worry. We love you, Lord. You're awesome. Help us to live strong for you, free from worry. It's in Jesus' name we pray.